Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. Uh, this is part three of Linux for DevOps crash course series. So if you have come to this channel for the first time, I recommend that you watch part one and part two and then watch this video. In this way, you will be able to understand the things better. Anyways, so let's start the session. So I'm going to start off with file descriptors. So what are file descriptors? When you open a file on a Linux system, the operating system is going to create an integer entry to represent that file on the system. So these integers are called file descriptors. We have three types of file descriptors. First one is STDIN, uh, also represented by number zero and called standard input. The second one is standard out, uh, STD out or standard output represented by number one. And the third one is STD error or standard error represented by number two. Okay, so what is STDIN? It is how data is entered or presented for processing, typically the keyboard or mouse. The meaning of these two sentences is when you are on a terminal and you're trying to input a command. So whatever command you input there is called standard input. And after you execute a command, you get the output back on the terminal. So that output is called standard output. Okay, then if that command does not succeed and if you see an error, that error is called standard error. Okay, so I've created this small diagram to understand, uh, to make you understand this. Suppose you have a terminal and uh, you, you're trying to input some commands on the terminal using your keyboard. So this, this command will be uh, called standard input. Okay, then after you have inputted the command, you have executed the command. If that command runs successfully, it's going to give you standard output. If that command fails and throws an error, that error will be part of standard error, which will be seen on, on your terminal again. Okay, so this is what this file descriptor says. I, uh, I don't want to go into the details of it too much, but I just wanted to make you understand because uh, because people will use these terms at times like standard input, standard output and standard error. So you should know these terms. All right. Let's move on to the next topic, which is redirection operators. So we have three redirection operators in general. Okay. Uh, first one is called pipe. So on your keyboard, on the right hand side, on the top right hand side, just below the backspace button, you will see this symbol there it's called pipe symbol. Okay. We use pipe in Linux to send output from one command to another for processing. Okay. And this is the example command. If you remember from our past videos slash etc slash passwd is the file which stores information on all the local users on a Linux system. So when I'm running this command with cat, it means I want to display the contents of passwd file. Okay. So here after this command, I'm using this pipe symbol, which means I'm trying to feed the output of this command to this pipe symbol and then I'm using it as input to other command which is grab ec2 hyphen user. Okay, let's see it in action. So I'm logged into my uh, AWS ec2 machine that I have been using for the past two videos. So it's an ec2 instance in AWS. Okay, and it is using uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 9. Okay, just to just to make you understand and I'm I'm uh, logged in as root user right now. So let's try to run that command, which we just saw. So cat slash etc slash passwd. So if you see, it's going to uh, give you the information of all the users on the system. Okay. But for example, I want to filter it out. I don't want to see all the information. I just want to filter it out for a particular user. In that case, I can use this pipe symbol. Okay. Like this. So uh, let's try to use this command now. So cat slash etc slash passwd and I'm going to use the pipe symbol and then I'm going to filter the output of the command. So all I want, I would just want to see the information of ec2 hyphen user. So you can see now I, I see information only for ec2 hyphen user. So this is the way to use this pipe here. So I'm, I'm, I'm using redirection, okay? The uh, output of so this command was redirected as input to this command and then the uh, this complete output was filtered out okay so this is the way to use this pipe symbol okay next is this this greater than symbol 
the normal greater than symbol that we use it's it's it it, it, it is called uh, redirection okay i mean it, it is it is also called uh, redirection symbol here in linux okay how to use it so you can use it to create a new file okay and uh, you can also use it to to write the output of a command to a file okay we'll see both the examples here okay and uh, if you see here it says use to write command output to a file which i just said and also it will create a new file it will create a file if it does not exist or will overwrite an existing file we'll see what what does this mean let's see this example first so once again i'm trying to run a normal command like this so i'm trying to display the contents of rsyslog.conf file which is in slash etc and you can see the contents of this file it's it's a file which with so much of information in it okay so what i what i want is i want to store the output of this command to a file in that case i can use this greater than symbol to redirect my output to a file how to do that cat slash etc slash rsyslog.conf okay so if i don't use anything right now the output will be displayed on the screen but i don't want that i want to write this output to a file okay so i am going to use this greater than symbol redirection like this and then i can just create this file like this now that output which was visible on the screen has been returned to this file okay now if i if i cat this file config.txt i can see the same output which was there in the file and one more thing this file was not present earlier so when i ran this command this file was created so i mean you don't have to create this file and then run this command if you just run this file straight away uh, this file will be created for you okay using this redirection symbol okay so uh, so in the, in this way I, I was able to write the output of this command to this file the meaning of this first line then a second line as i mentioned it's it's going to create a new file if it does not exist or it's going to overwrite an existing file which means suppose i have another i want to write the output of another command let's use the same command pass wd and i want to write it to the same file config.txt if i hit now if i if i hit enter now what i have done is i have deleted the content which was already there in the file and replaced it with the new new text which is this one which is the output of slash etc slash pass wd file so in this way i was able to uh, uh, overwrite the contents of this file called uh, config.txt the meaning of this line this sentence here okay and one more thing i can use it to create a new file how to do that cat then get it and symbol then the name of the file that you want to create so i'm i'm going to use the same example file1 .txt okay just one more thing right now if you see i don't have this file created okay i only have this config.txt file i don't have file1.txt so i'm trying to create this file using this get it and redirection okay so i'll do cat space get it and then file1.txt hit enter and then whatever contents you write now it's going to be written to this file okay how to do that here they have written random text you can write anything random text hit enter then write something else like like let's write the name of my channel tech applicate all right let's write devops enter now to uh, come out of it just type control c like this okay now if i do ls i will see this new file created so i use this this redirection symbol to create a new file and enter some text as well now if i try to cat the contents of this file i will see the same thing which i entered okay so in this way you can create a new file also and you can enter the text also if you want okay remember this so this is the use of this greater than symbol next so this is the, the same example which i just showed you okay so i have mentioned all the examples in this ppt itself so that you can practice it on your own without any issues 
then there is one more re redirection operator called double greater than okay double greater than so it is uh, kind of similar to single greater than but the 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 difference is this one append so if you have an existing file and you don't want to uh, uh, overwrite the contents of the file which are which is already there so you you have the option to append some more uh, text to it some more contents to it so in that case we have to use this double greater than symbol okay so it is used to append command output to a file okay and also it's it's it's, it's also going to create a new file if the file does not exist okay or it is going to add the output to the to an existing file okay so let's see the example we have two files here let's see this file file1.txt we already know that we have this text now suppose i want to add some additional text to it without without making any changes to the existing text okay so what i'll do is i'll do cat double greater than symbol and use the same file file1.txt enter and le let's write some text linux for devops course enter and i'll do control c now if i try to cat the contents i will see my existing text also and my new text also okay so in this way you can add the text or you can append the text to an existing file okay it also creates a new file if the file does not exist for example i can do ls i can see there are two files now if i have to create a new file using this i can do that so let's do file 2.txt test test enter control c now if i do cat file 2.txt i can see the file was created okay the file was created file 2.txt so it works in the same way as single greater than but the difference is it is it, it is not going to delete the existing contents of the file it's going to append to it okay in the next line so that's what this example also says here it adds text and then uh, you can check this all right so uh, you can practice this example when you have this file with you next i want to talk about a very important concept in linux called vi or vim text editor okay so vi and vim are almost similar just that vim has some additional features as compared to v, uh, this vi so i'm trying to use vim wherever uh, wherever possible so that you I mean you can use all the options available okay so all information in Linux is stored in text based files so that they can be moved or shared with systems without requiring conversion and can be viewed and edited using any simple text editor this is a very important information to understand that in Linux whatever files you create or open or do anything all the files are text based okay and the simple reason is if you have to export that file to somewhere else you can always do it okay and the files are going to open in any any text editor if right now i export a file from this linux vm to my windows laptop i can open that file in notepad without any problems okay so that is why linux uses these uh, text based files always for for for, for all, all the configuration of applications we use this okay for for anything uh, that, that you want to store as file we always uh, try to use the text based files in linux just remember this part okay this is really important and vi or vim is one of the most important uh, text editors on a, on a linux machine okay so this vi or vim editor is used in most of the operating systems across the world okay so it is it, it is really uh, i mean it, it is really uh, uh, important to understand how this works okay so let's run through this so vi is a standard command line text editor as i mentioned and vim or vim is an improved version of vi with features like uh, color formatting and some other features as well which are part of vim then to install vim on rail 9 if you already do not have uh, just run this command okay so let's see if i have vim let me log in as standard user no let me log in as root user only so i am already logged in as root so if i do vim enter so i already have installed okay but if you don't have just copy and paste this command and uh, it's going to install vim on your machine okay just copy and paste this command all right then uh, to 
to uh, show you the uh, different uh, uh, options that we have with Vim, I have uh, created one GitHub repository. So to use this this GitHub repository, you have to install another package called Git. So to, to uh, do that, you can just copy and paste this command, and it's going to install uh, Git on your machine. And then you can use this command to clone the repository. Okay. So just copy and paste this URL from here after you have installed Git. And just run the command. And if you do ls, you will see one more directory, which is vim directory. Okay, so just go into this and there's a file. If you do ls, so there's a file linux.txt, which I want to uh, show you with some examples of how to use vim okay so let's start and let's go one by one so there are various modes in vim text editor or vim text editor that you should understand so let's open this file first vim linux.txt so this is the way you you open an existing file using vim so just type vim space then the name of the file or the part to the file that you want to open okay so when you hit enter, the first thing that you see is your file text and this mode is called normal mode right now. So this is the, non the normal mode and in this mode you can navigate using the uh, up, down, left, right keys. Okay, like this you can navigate to different texts, different parts of the uh, file if you want to. Now if you have to uh, modify this file or you have to uh, I mean enter some text okay what you have to do is in, in this normal mode you have to you have to press I button on your keyboard as soon as you press I you will see insert showing up on the screen which means you are in the insert mode now so now you can enter the text like this this is part 3 of the video series Okay, then I mean after you have finished writing your uh, your text, you have to press escape to go back to normal mode. If you press escape, that uh, insert will go away. Now, if you have to save this, okay, if, if you have to save, I mean whatever you have uh, written, you have to type a colon w colon w enter. So this is going to save the file with the latest changes. So I uh, just edit this text here and that text was added to the file. Okay, using that w, sorry, uh, this uh, colon w command. Okay, now if I have to, let's see what all options are given there. So normal mode we, we saw, insert mode we saw, then uh, 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 there's one more, uh, this mode called visual mode. To go to visual mode, just type v. The meaning of visual mode is you can copy and paste the contents like this. Okay. Like this you can copy and paste or, or, you, or you can copy and paste from your mouse also like I, I normally do but this visual mode is also available in Vim. Just type escape to, to go back to normal mode. Next is there's, there's one more uh, mode which is called the terminal mode. To go to this terminal mode you have to uh, press colon T E R M enter so what you will see is you will see your your file as well and and, and you will get to terminal back so in this case you will see uh, like a split screen uh, where you have your uh, terminal where you can run all the commands uh, as you normally do and then you have your file open as well okay uh, to come out of it just type control D like this Okay, though I don't use this this mode at all, but I just wanted to I'm show you that there's an option available like that. But uh, once again, in Vim, there are hundred different things that you can do, but not uh, all the things we'll be using in day to day life. So whatever I am using, okay, most of the things that I am using, I'm trying to cover all those. Okay. Okay. Next is this is a really important uh, feature of Vim. So suppose you have an issue uh, and, and and you're trying to troubleshoot an issue. And, and there's a file that you opened in Vim, and now you have to uh, just see I mean, where the error is. Okay, so in that case, what I do, I use this set number option. So what I do, I type colon set space number enter, and 
in this way I can see the line numbers okay and then in, and sometimes in, in the error messages you will see that this line has some issues or that line has some issues so in that case it is really easy for me to identify which line has issued uh, has, has issues and then I can I mean go there and troubleshoot the issue accordingly okay so this is uh, like one of the most important things that I use in BI the set number option okay next let's go to next slide now let's just uh, come out of this now if, if you have to open a new file so uh, then also you can use vim okay so what i can do is vim space new file dot txt and it's going to open the new file for you then you can go to insert mode you can type anything that you want hit escape then type control w and to quit you will type a control w q which means you want to save and quit now if i cat this new file you will see the text that you entered so in this way i was able to create the new file using vim text editor okay next is if you want to force quit something so suppose i open this file again and I edit some text. I edit some text. All right. And now I want to, I mean, I don't want to save it. I just want to quit. So I'll type escape and then I'll type a colon Q exclamation mark. Now, if I, uh, if, if I cat the file, I won't see those changes because I quit it without saving. Okay. Okay, next is save and quit. Now, if I have to uh, save something, so suppose I want to add some text here. So I'll do, I'll enter some random text. Now I want to save and quit. Okay, I'll type escape and then I'll do uh, uh, colon WQ enter. Now, if I cat, I will see I. Uh, I read some text and I was able to save and quit. So you can use this colon WQ or you can use a control X or shift ZZ. Then let's open our old file, linux.txt. If you have to scroll up and down using a page up and page down button, you can do so using a control B and control F. Okay. So control B is going to give, take you down. And if you want to go up, using page up you can do control f and you can go you can scroll up control b and control f remember this okay then to reach the top of the file you can type gg so if you are in the middle of the file and you want to go to the first line just type gg it will go back to the first line so, then similarly if you want to go to the last line just type shift g and you will reach the last line and all these commands uh, work always in the normal mode. Remember this, okay? You have to be in the normal mode to use all these commands. Then to move to the start of the line, suppose I'm in the middle of the line somewhere here. I want to reach the start of the line. I can just type zero and I'll reach the start of the line. Similarly, if I want to reach the end of the line, I will type shift four and I'll reach the end of the line. Okay, similarly, uh, if you want to add add a new line and you have to insert and you want to uh, I mean you want to get into insert mode by moving to the next line okay then if you want to uh, uh, undo something just type u it will undo the things that you did okay so undo is uh, I mean u is for undo and if you want to redo just type period or dot it's going to redo the things similarly if you want to delete a line just type dd it's going to delete the whole line where, where you are so right now i'm here so if i want to delete this line i'll just type dd and i'm going to delete the line like this i can delete multiple lines okay then a copy and paste so a copy and paste in vim is called yank and put okay so for example i want to copy these one two three four five one two three four lines i want to copy these four lines what i'll do is i'll type four y y and then wherever i want to paste it just type p so 
what I did, I uh, I took my cursor to this this position and then I type four y y, which means I am going to copy the next four lines. One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, including this line. One, two, three, four, and then I just uh, pasted the content here. So in this way, I was able to copy and paste in the Vim editor. Okay. All right. So next, come next is uh, how to search for a text in Vim. Okay. So what you will do is inside the vi file for example i want to search for concept for example so i'll i'll use this forward slash and type the text that i want to search and hit enter so let me reopen the file there's some issue now i want to search for this term called concept so just type concept, hit enter, and then to see the uh, next search result, just type N and keep hitting N to see the uh, next search item. Okay. In this way, you can search for a specific text inside a Vim file. Okay. So that's all I want to cover as part of Vim text editor. But once again, as I said, there are hundred different things that you can do. In Vim, it depends on you what you want to use. But what I use on day-to-day -day basis, I just showed you everything. Okay. Next is Linux permissions. This is also a very important concept to understand. So Linux permissions. So any any file or directory that you see on a Linux system is controlled by some permissions. Okay. So access to files by users are controlled by file permissions, and there are three. There are three types of categories of user permissions that we can give on a Linux system. User permission, group permission, or others permission. Okay, and then uh, uh, there are three types of permissions that these users can use. Okay, either they can have read access, write access, or executable access to a file or a directory. Okay, then I have prepared this small table to give you the summary of these different type of permissions that these users attain and I mean, what they can do and I mean, what they cannot do. Okay, so I mean, we're going to see these, uh, these with some examples, okay? So if you see uh, effect on file, so if I talk about read permission, suppose there's a user who has read permission on a file, that means that user can see the contents of the file so he can read the contents of the file similarly if a user has write access to a file that means he can change the uh, the contents of the file okay so similarly if that user has execute access on that file that means those files can be run as commands or they can be uh, I mean if there's a file which is a script then that script can be run by that user or it can be executed by that user. Okay. Similarly, if a user has read permissions on a directory, that means he or she can list out the contents of the directory. Okay. If that user has write access on a directory, that means anything inside the directory, he can create or delete. Okay. So inside a directory, if you have multiple files and directories, those files and directories can be deleted or some new ones can be created inside the directory by that user who has write access on a directory. Now similarly, if that user has execute permissions on a directory, that means the contents of the directory can be accessed. Okay. But it also depends on the permissions on the individual files itself. Okay. We are going to see everything in an example on, on a terminal. Okay. But I just wanted to go through this once. So let's start. So we have two important commands when we talk about file permissions. First one is ch own command, which also stands for change owner. Okay. So of course it is used to change the owner of the file. So, I mean, you can modify the, the, the user permissions, the 
group permissions and others permissions okay we'll see it in in a, in a moment what these mean and uh, you have one more command called ch mode which stands for change mode which is used to apply the type of permissions read write or execute permissions okay so ch on stands for change owner ch mode or mod stands for uh, change mode then this is the format that the ch mod command actually uses ch mod then who what which then the path to the file or directory that you want to apply the permissions on so who can be either a user or a group or other or all all means the combination of u g and o then similarly what uh, uh, it, it can be either uh, plus minus or exactly or equal to okay similarly which which means the type of permissions so read write or execute and these are two examples that i've given so for example you want to use the ch mod command and you want to remove the read or write permissions for group and others on file one so in that case what you will do is ch mod g and o together means group and others and you want to minus the read write permissions for group and others on file one so this is how the command is used then similarly if you want to apply the execute permissions to all all means user group and others for file 2 so this is the way to do it ch mod space a plus x a means all i want to apply execute permissions to all user user group and others for file 2 so it means add execute permissions for everyone on file 2 okay i know this is a little bit confusing so let's see some examples so for that i have created one separate docx file for, with all the example commands okay that you can practice on your own also so let's open that file so i'm i'm going to my terminal now I'm going to exit out of this i'm going to go my go to my root directory Uh, root users home directory slash root and i'm going to uh, log out of root user and i'm going to become a regular user like ec2 hyphen user okay i'm under home directory of my ec2 hyphen user and i don't have any files or directories inside this okay so so uh, just note that all the uh, the text which is in blue are, are the real commands that you can just copy and paste from here and run it on your terminal okay so let's start with uh, creating one directory called perm as given in the instruction so i'm going to create this directory mkdir perm then i'm going to go into this directory okay then i'm going to create two files touch f1 f2 to ls i can see the two files present and i am under slash home slash ec2 hyphen user slash perm directory okay so i have two files here then i'm going to uh, list out the permissions of the file to list out the permissions of files and directories on a linux system in, in the most simplest way you have to use ls space hyphen l command okay and you can see the permissions so let's just run through this whole output that we're seeing right now so when you run this command ls space hyphen l the first bit is going to show you if the object that you are seeing is a file or a directory if it's a dash it means it's a regular file f1 and f2 are regular files if we had a directory in this location we would see something like d written d written instead of dash it will be d which means this object uh, will be a directory okay not in this case but i'm just saying if it was d then it, it, it would have meant that this f1 is a directory not a file okay i'll show you in uh, some later examples okay so this first bit is going to show you the type of file if it's a file or a directory then the next three bits in this case rw hyphen are the permission bits for the user of the file or the directory in this case the user who owns this file is this ec2 hyphen user 
So this is the user who owns this file F1. Okay, so this user has read and write permissions on this file and not execute, okay, because it is dash. If, if this user had uh, execute permissions also, then it would have been RWX here, but it's a dash here. That means this user only has read and write permissions on this file. Okay, then the next three bits are for group ownership. So which is R dash dash. So this is the group owner. Of this file okay so this file is owned by this group ec2 hyphen user is also a group or just like it's a user it is a group too so it is owned by this group and this group has only read permissions on this file because after read it is dash dash else it would have been wx so right now this this group only has read permissions on this f1 file then this uh, uh, these last three bits are r dash dash which means any other user on this linux system apart from ec2 hyphen user and the group ec2 hyphen user they will have read permissions on this file which means i mean apart from these two all the other users can at least read the file read the contents of the file okay they have they have the uh, the the option to read the file but they don't have the uh, the uh, w and x permissions on this file this and this also you can leave it for now then this is the owner of the file or the directory this is the group owner of the file or directory then this is the size of the file since it's an empty file so the size is set to zero right now and this is the last modification time of the file okay just remember this so in this way we can check the different permissions applied on various objects within a within a particular location now let's start our practical for uh, seeing the the uh, file permissions so i've created these two files what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, enter some text into one of the files called f1 how to do that we, we just saw we can use this redirection operator called greater than so cat space greater than space name of the file enter and then you can write any anything so just so let's just try to copy this same text here. Just giving the example. Copy and paste. Enter. Control C. Now if I cat the contents, I can see this is a random file. So this this particular uh, file has this content in it right now. Okay. Logged in as EC2 hyphen user. Okay. Then if I change the permissions, to change permissions, you can use chmod command. chmod. So how to use this chmod command? It's it's pretty important to understand. We'll write the command chmod. Then what I want to do? I want to uh, to remove the write permissions of the user. So I'll do u minus w, which means I want to remove write permissions from the user of this file which file f1 file so i am trying to remove the write permissions from f1 file for user ec2 hyphen user now if i see the permissions again ls space hyphen l i can see that w is gone so uh, so now ec2 hyphen user only had only has read permissions on this file and no write permissions now if i try to add some content to the file using this okay so I'll do cat. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this double greater than here to uh, try to add something additional to it. I will see this error permission denied because I don't have the right permissions on this file. So I, I, I won't be able to make any changes to this file. Okay, so this is how the, the permissions work. Okay. Now, let's see another example so what we have seen so far is let's go back here that uh, read permissions on a file okay how to see that and how to change that if you want i mean if, if you want to add or remove the permissions for a user the read permissions and similarly we have seen the write permissions as well on the file okay so if the user has write access he or she can change the file if he doesn't, he, he will not be able to change the file. 
okay if the user has read permission he or she will be able to see the contents of the file else not okay then see the execute permissions okay uh, let's see the execute uh, the permission example so let's copy and paste the example from here so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to add some content to another file that i created called f2 okay so i'm i'm going to use the same redirection operator greater than symbol so cat greater than f2 what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to enter some text in f2 file okay because i i i uh, have permissions to enter text to f2 file okay remember so what i'm trying to add is this thing so let's just let's just uh, type it so i'm using hash exclamation mark slash bin slash bash enter and then echo random text enter control c now if i do cat f2 i can i want to uh, talk about the text that i've written okay so the meaning of this is i've entered this hash exclamation mark okay to to make a file in linux as a script to run as a script you have to enter this at the start of the file always it's called shebang s h e b a n g it's called shebang this hash and exclamation mark together called shebang you have to enter this shebang and then the default shell of the user that you're trying to use so i'm using ec2 hyphen user and i know the default shell of ec2 hyphen user is slash bin slash bash okay and this is the default shell okay to check the default shell you can do echo dollar shell slash bin slash bash the default shell that the user is using okay so this is the way to create a file as a script okay so uh, you have to add this text at the start of the file and then you have to uh, type your commands that you want to include as part of the script so here I'm, I'm i'm using the most simplest command which is echo command which is used to print some text so i'm trying to print random text here okay so let's see the files and the permissions so this f2 file is owned by ec2 hyphen user and and the group permissions are also with ec2 hyphen user okay and ec2 hyphen user has read and write permissions only so ec2 hyphen user does not have execute permissions so even though i mean we have converted it to a script we still cannot execute it as ec2 hyphen user because we don't have x permissions on this file okay so what you have to do is and and you can try that okay how to run a script to run a script you have to use dot slash the name of the script file so dot is representing the present working directory the script is located in in present working directory from from there you have to use you have to go to f2 file only if i run this you can see permission denied because i don't have the x permissions to execute this script right now as ec2 hyphen user okay and this is the way to execute a script remember this dot slash then the path to the script okay so to uh, fix this issue what i have to do is i have to add the x permissions to user on f2 file okay so i'll do ch mod space u plus x space then the name of the file or the path to the file which is f2 file now if i do ls space hyphen l i can see the file color change to green which means it's a script okay so this is one more way to identify if the file has executable permissions it will be uh, i mean the change is i mean uh, the color is going to change generally to green okay and if and now if you see the user permission has been updated and uh, ec2 hyphen user now has read write and execute permissions on f2 file so now if i try to execute the file again I will be able to execute and see the skip had to uh, print the random text and I was able to print it okay so in this way I uh, just uh, uh, was able to add it add the uh, uh, execute permissions 
for ec2 hyphen user and then i was able to run the script in this way the script uh, i mean the script works in this way okay so if, if i go back to my table you can see effect of files on x so if you if you are a user who have execute permission on a file you can execute that file as commands which i just did in this example okay so this is the way to check and modify the permissions so uh, here we, we have only spoken about files now let's uh, talk about the directories also how these different permissions affect the different directories okay so let's go to our word file which has all the examples so we have finished until here now what i'll do is let's take the present working directory i'm under slash home slash ec2 hyphen user slash perm i'm going to create one directory using mkdir command so i'll do mkdir space d1 into ls space hyphen l i can check i have this d1 directory now if you see the first bit is d because i we created a directory and the color is also blue and not white so the white are files the green are the script files and the blue are the directories okay now let's create two files under this directory this new directory so how to do that you can use a touch command touch space directory name slash name of the file that you want to create because i want to create this file under d1 directory so i'm using d1 and then the name of the file similarly just replace f11 with f12 now if i do ls space hyphen l where on d1 directory because i want to see the contents of d1 i can see i was able to create two files f11 and f12 okay so ec2 hyphen user can list contents on of the directory as read permissions are applied on the d1 directory let's go back to this table if you see to list out the contents of a directory you must have read permissions on that directory okay if i go back i can if i do ls space hyphen l i can see i am logged in as ec2 hyphen user and i have read permissions on this directory okay i have read write and execute permission on directory so that is why i was able to list out the contents of this directory okay then next is we want to check the write permissions on a directory how it is impacted so let's go back to our word file and Uh, can list out the contents all right that's fine now what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to remove the read permissions on directory so just to see if it if the uh, the the permissions changes okay so right now i'm able to list out the contents of this d1 directory because i have read permissions on this directory now if i remove the permissions so i'll do ch mod i'll do u minus r as you can see u minus r on which directory d1 directory now if i check the permissions again i can see i don't have the read permissions now on this directory which means i should not be able to list out the contents of d1 directory logged in as ec2 hyphen user so i'll do ls space hyphen l d1 and there you go i don't have the permission because i removed the read permissions on the directory okay so this is how you can change the permissions so let's just add back the permissions so i'll do ch mod u plus r u plus r on d1 directory and now if i run that same command i will be, will be able to list out the contents as soon as as i added the read permissions on the directory logged in as ec2 hyphen user okay next let's try to delete so uh, let's just go to this table first and see the effect of write permissions if as a user you have write permissions on a directory which means any file in the directory can be created or deleted okay so within the directory you can create a new file or you can delete an existing file if you have write permissions on a directory so let's see the the current permissions so i'll do ls space hyphen l and i can see as ec2 hyphen user i have read write and execute permissions which means which means i should be able to 
delete the file. I should be able to delete the file inside D1 directory. So let's try to check it. So rm space rm is used to remove a file. Within D1, I want to delete F1 file. Okay. F1 or F1, whatever, whatever the file name is. If I do this, sorry, uh, F11. So the name of the file is F11. Now let's try to see ls space hyphen ld1. So this F11 file was deleted and only F12 file is left inside D1 directory. Okay. So I was able to delete the file because I have write permissions on D1 directory. Okay. So this is the way to check the permissions. Now, if I want to create a file in this directory, D1 directory. So how to do that? I can do touch space D1 and uh, uh, let's just try to create the same file which we just deleted F11. LS space hyphen L D1. So I'm trying to list out the contents of D1 and you can see this file was created just now. Okay. A2, A3. Okay. So I just created this file right now because I have write permissions on this directory, which is in accordance to this table. So I should have write, write permissions on a directory to create a file or to delete a file, to delete an existing file or to create a new file within a directory. Okay. So I was able to do so because I have write permissions. Now let's see how this uh, uh, execute permission works on, on a directory. So if I have execute permissions on a directory, then the contents of the directory can be accessed. Okay, dependent on the permission of, of the file in, in the directory as well. Okay, so let's see the example. So this we have already checked. We, I mean, we are able to create a file okay uh, under this d1 directory because we have write permissions on the directory and on the file as well okay so one more example if you see ls space hyphen l uh, d1 okay so now now if you see right now i have the read permissions on f11 file okay uh, let's try to enter some text into this file because this is an empty file right now okay so let's try to enter some text so this is one more way of of entering the text to a file you can use the echo command so echo some text then you have to redirect it to the file where you want to save this text so i'm i want to save it to F11 file located under D1 directory. Okay, now if I do cat, I can see I was able to write the contents to this file. Okay, now <clears throat> so I'm, I'm able to uh, access the contents of the file within the directory. Okay, because I have because I have execute permissions on directed even and read permissions on file f f11 in our case, not f12 here. So if I if I go back to here, if, if I go back to this this table, if you see, if you have execute permissions on directories, that means the contents of the directory can be accessed. Okay, but you should have the permission on the file itself. So right now I have the permission on the file to read the contents. I have the read write permission on this file f11. Okay, and uh, I have uh, the uh, execute permissions on the directory also. So that's why I'm able to uh, get into the directory and uh, make changes to the files inside this directory. Okay, now if I make, make a change, so I'm going to remove the read permissions. So I'll do chmod u minus r on this file called f1 okay in, in our case it is f11 sorry f11 so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to remove the read permissions on the file from user so i'm, I'm trying to remove the the 
read permissions on this file f11 here now if i do ls space hyphen l d1 i can see that ec2 hyphen user does not have read permissions only write permissions are available okay only write permissions are available so read permissions are gone so now if i try to uh get the contents i won't be able to do so i will get this error permission denied so i mean getting the writes on on the directory does not mean that you will be able to see the content of the file until you have the read permissions on the file also within the directory okay so this is pretty important the and the, the meaning of this this particular section is dependent on the permissions of the file in the directory so you should have the permissions both on the directory and on the file okay uh, to be able to access the file all right so this is the meaning of this so uh, uh, we will see this error when you don't have the right permissions next is so this we have seen so let's just try to add the permissions again so i'll do u plus r so i'm trying to add the read permissions for the user on f11 file now if i run that command i'll be able to get the contents okay so as soon as i edit the read permissions on the file within this d1 directory i was able to get the contents of the file within the directory okay now we will see if if we remove the execute permissions on the directory itself okay so right now i have the x permissions on 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 directory d1 so i'll try to remove this ch mod u minus x on d1 directory let's take the permission again so you can see i don't have the execute permissions on d1 directory logged in as ec2 happen user which means i should not be able to see the contents of the directory okay the contents of the directory cannot be accessed okay so if you see inside the directory i have the sorry so i won't be able to access the the content of the file since i don't have the x permissions okay so i'll i'll see this error okay let's go back to our example file so it doesn't matter if you have the read permissions on on the file inside a directory but you should have the x permissions on the directory as well okay so now if i add the permissions again if i add the permissions u plus x so i'm trying to add the execute execute permissions on d1 directory now i can list out the contents again okay so this is how the permission works so i have shown you all the examples of this table effect of files read write x effect on directories read write x in this file so all the examples are given here the link to this a uh, file will be shared in the description of the video so you can download and you can practice on your own and even then if you have any doubts you can always put it in the comment section okay i'm going to answer all your queries on this let's close this all the examples are done and now uh, let's go back to our ppt so next after this i want to talk about some more commands okay so ch on we have seen already to modify user group and other permissions ch mod we have seen to modify type of permissions read write execute then there is uh, okay i think oh yeah so we have not seen this command yet as as a practical okay so uh, uh, we'll try to use this command now ch on command so ch on stand for change owner okay and this is the format that is uh, is uses so next we are going to talk about some more concepts around the file permissions in linux so as you can see uh, we have used this ch mod command but we haven't used ch own command okay and this is just the example that you can see here so we are going to see some some practicals on these commands now in our next slides okay so <clears throat> so changing file directory user or group ownership you can use the ch own command to change the file and directory user or group ownership a newly created file is owned by the user who creates the file 
okay so this is the default behavior so whenever you are logged in as a user and you're trying to create a file or directory that new file or directory will be owned by that particular user only who created the file or the directory okay by default the new file has a group ownership of the user creating the file so since i'm logged in as ec2 hyphen user and the group is also ec2 hyphen user okay the group is also ec2 hyphen user so any file or directory that i create right now so by default that file will have ec2 hyphen user as the owner and ec2 hyphen user as the group okay so this is the default behavior in linux but you can change the file ownership using the ch own command okay so we'll see some examples how to use ch own command now so for example to grant ownership of f4 to user 1 user one the following command can be used okay so this is just an example here and we'll try to see it on this terminal now so let's just try to create a user first so i'm going to create a user called user one using this command so i'll do sudo space user add space user one okay okay it's already exists so i don't have to create it but if, if you don't have this user created just create this user using this command okay in my case it's already created then I'm going to create a file called f4. Created. If I do ls, I can see the new file f4 created. Now I'm going to use the ch own command. Just remember, whenever you're using ch own command, I'm logged in as ec2 hyphen user. Mind you, if I use this command right now, ch own user one f4, I won't be able to do because changing an ownership will need you to be a root user so i mean you should have the the super user uh, access to do so okay but ec2 hyphen user is a pseudo user which means if i add sudo with this same command i will be able to run the command successfully so what i'm trying to do is let's just come out of it let's try to see the current permissions so right now this f4 file was created by ec2 hyphen user and by default ec2 hyphen user is the user and the group owner of this f4 file but i want to change the ownership of this file f4 okay so i want to change this ec2 hyphen user to user1 so for that i can use ch own command so i'll do sudo ch own user1 f4 it means i want to change the ownership of f4 file to user1 if i run this command if I do ls space hyphen l once again, I can see the ownership of the file was changed from ec2 hyphen user to user1. So this is the way you use ch own command to change the ownership of a file or a directory. Okay, this is what it is shown here. Next, let's see some more examples. ch own can be used with hyphen capital R option to recursively change the ownership of an entire directory tree. The following command would grant ownership of directory to, to all files in and subdirectories within it to user one. The meaning of this is, for example, I have this directory with me, d1, and within d1, we can see we have some files already created. Okay. Now, if you see the ownership is with ec2 hyphen user, but if I want to change the uh, ownership of all the files within the directory with just one command, so I can use this capital hyphen r option which means recursive what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to change the ownership within a directory recursively which means within the directory whatever is available but whatever files and directories are available on all those files and directories the permissions are going to flow in or are going to change to uh, what i said using this command okay for example let me create some more files touch d1 f one three four one five okay now if i do ls space hyphen l on d1 i can see we have five files owned by ec2 hyphen user both the user permissions and the group owner permissions now i want to change the permissions of all these files with using one command i can use this command okay so how to do it i have to use a sudo since i'm trying to change the ownership so i have to be super user ch own space hyphen capital r recursively okay user one 
on which directory d1 directory so i'm trying to change the ownership of all the files and directories within d1 to user1 now if i check this i can see the ownership has been changed from ec2 user2 to user1 for all the files within this directory so this is how you use this ch own command change ownership command okay this is what it is shown in the example also next is one more example ch own can also be used to change group ownership of a file by preceding the group name with a colon for example the following command will change the group ec2 hyphen user2 user1 now if you want to change the group ownership also you can use the same command okay how to do that right now i can see the group ownership is still with ec2 hyphen user so i'll use the same command sudo ch own okay then i'm going to so this time i'm going to apply the changes on directory only okay but you can do so uh, on all the files and directories using the hyphen r option so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to change the ownership of the group okay so i have to use this colon user1 then the name of the directory ls space hyphen l i can see the group ownership of the directory was changed to user1 it was ec2 hyphen user earlier on okay now if you want to do it recursively you can repeat the same command just add space hyphen r option okay now if i check the contents of d1 you can see the group ownership was also changed for all the files within this directory since i used space hyphen r for recursively changing the ownership so this is how you can use the ch own command here okay the last example also uh, you can use ch own to change both the owner and group permissions at once okay how to do that let's create a test file as given in the example so i'll do touch test file enter so ls space hyphen l i can see the permissions of test file right now ec2 hyphen user ec2 hyphen user this is the default behavior all right so now i can use this command okay so how to to use this command sudo ch own space the new group uh, the new user owner which i want user 1 then colon then the group owner which i want it to be root where i want to apply the changes i want to apply it to this test file so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to change the user owner to user1 and group owner to root on test file okay changes applied if i check the permissions now i can see the user was changed to user1 from ec2 hyphen user and the group permissions was changed from ec2 hyphen user to root on test file so this is how you can use this ch own command in various ways depending on your requirement okay there is one more example the last one which is chgrp change group so there is there is one more command to change the group permissions using chgrp command also so you can do sudo chgrp change group so this is just just one more command to change the group permissions only change group uh to ec2 hyphen user so i'm trying to change back the permissions of group to ec2 hyphen user on test file okay hit enter now if i see the permissions again i can see the permissions were changed to ec2 hyphen user again from root user on test file using the chgrp command so so you can use this command also depending on which command you want to use they both do the same job okay so you can use chgrp you can use ch own as per your convenience all right so that's all i want to cover in this session i hope you like the video if you did please hit the like button uh, and then share it with anyone who wants to learn linux and also i would request you to please subscribe to my channel okay i am trying to put in a lot of effort in these videos and i i want to uh, continue doing the same so i need all your support all right guys uh, that's all i wanted to cover and i'm going to see you in the next one